What's good? It's your boy Fanon. All right, it is the week of the fights. We back on and popping. Really looking forward to it. Going to talk about one bout that I crept up on me. And it's super exciting bout. I can't wait to see it. One of two of my favorite boxers, Jamel Charlo and Austin Trout. And uh, so we're going to talk about that and some things that they said. Uh, before I get into that, hey, please uh, sub- hope that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when when uh, I release videos and also so that you can know about the live streams that we do. We talk about a lot of the different fights that are going on in the live stream to do videos. It's kind of difficult because only do a couple of day uh, to talk about all of the different topics in boxing. But the best way to talk about those those are to come to the live streams because we have a whole lot of very knowledgeable boxing fan that talk about all the weight classes. And I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you to everybody that supports the channel channel as well uh venmo super chat and patreon so with that let's get into it my man jamal jamel charlo the one of the charlo twins is facing austin trout and uh austin trout says some things i think were or interesting about jamel charlo that made me wonder i mean he's trout is being so complimentary of jamel charlo that I really do wonder, man, if he thinks he's got a if he's got a chance to win. Now I have Jamel Charlo winning this bout, but you know I'm a big I've been a big fan, a big supporter of uh of Austin Trout ever since the uh, I saw him beat Miguel Cotto, and then I I thought he beat uh I thought he beat Canelo Alvarez, but you know hey man he didn't get the call, but you know just a very very solid. Very solid boxer, seems to be a very, very um, nice guy and always comes to work, always gives exciting, exciting fights, which is something that these you know fighters that fight with the PBC are doing. And I'm also going to compliment comment that uh, on that at the end of the uh, <laughs> towards the end of the video. So stay with me. Now, this is what uh, the article because he basically Trout compared Jamal Charlo, Jamel Charlo to uh austin to uh jared heard man <laughs> and i can see i hear some bitterness in jermel charles voice and i can understand why why he would have some of that there but um <laughs> but what he said is is essentially true and he says uh trout uh, says jermel charlo has a boat has a boatload more skills than heard jared heard is the only op- opponent who has stopped austin trout since trout turned pro 12 and a half years ago. The bigger, stronger herd wore down Trout during their fight October 14th in Brooklyn until Trout felt like he couldn't continue. Their scheduled 12, 12 round match uh, championship matchup is, had been very competitive before Herd's physicality overwhelmed Trout, who was down on all three scorecards when their bout was stopped after the 10th round. Uh, 97, 93, 96, 94, and 96, 94, which I, yeah, cause he had those. Yeah. I think he had those knockdowns, but Jermel Charlo is bigger than trout too, yet not quite as large as the six foot one herd. Charlo stands five eleven, about one and a half inches taller than trout. Trout won't face uh, Trout won't only face a size disadvantage during their June 9th bout, though. The former WBA super welterweight champ pointed out during a press conference on Wednesday that he'll also encounter a much more skillful opponent in Houston's Charlo, who's 30 and 0 with 15 KOs uh, than when he challenged Hurd. Jamel has a boatload more skills, Trout said. In my opinion, Hurd is not very skilled. He's just a big, tough dude, you know. Uh, Jermel, he's tough and, you know, he's bigger than most junior middleweights, but he's awfully skilled. So we definitely got to got to got to worry about his skill set as opposed to him just taking punishment and me make and making me uh, wear down, beating him up. <laughs> That's what happened with her. I just beat him up until I ran out of gas until I couldn't beat him up no more. <laughs> That's funny. The 32 year old trout of Las Cruces, New Mexico, suffered from dehydration the night he challenged Hurd for the IBF junior middleweight title at Barclays Center. 
I was just worn down. And again, I had to go to the hospital for dehydration, which I've never experienced. Horn said, uh, but you know, we were throwing some heat from the first, uh, from the first six, seven rounds. And, uh, he buzzed me a couple times and I felt like I, uh, just a little bit more worn down, just a little bit more each round until I had nothing left. And, uh, that's when he came on. If the 28 year old Charlo can successfully defend his WBC super middleweight title against trout, he will probably face Heard in an intriguing title unification fight later this year. Heard edged Islandi Lara by split decision uh, in his last match. April 7th in Las Vegas to retain the IBF title and win the WBA and IBO championships from Cuba's Lara. The Trout Charlo Bout <coughs> will open Showtime's double header June 9th from the Staples Center in Los, in Los Angeles. In the main event, Leo Santa Cruz of Rosemead, California, will defend his WBA super featherweight title against Abner Mares in a 12-round rematch. Yeah, man, that's about right. <laughs> because I got to tell you, man, I like Jared Hurd, but um, what Austin Trout said is, I mean, I think that is a true, true reflection of what happened in that bout, is that he just... <sighs> Austin, Jared Hurd's best defense, at least what he shows, is his face. <laughs> and I got some, I got you know a lot of you know, a lot of friends on YouTube who uh, who like Jared Hurd a lot, especially cats out from um you know from the East Coast because he's from the DC area, right? So I'm sure you know he's from uh, you know PG County or something like that. Maybe not directly from the heart of Washington DC, but you know I would. Basically out there with the D, you know, the DC, I think he's from the DC, Silver Spring, Maryland, you know, someone, you know, somewhere right around that region. So there's a lot of guys that come to the channel and um, my man, the Cornerman Radio, who, uh, you know, who really are down with, uh, with, your, with um, Jared Hurd. And so, you know, I respect Jared Hurd. He also seems like a real nice dude and it takes some skill to, I mean, I guess a chin is a skill. But at a certain point in time, man, you know, he's going to have to mix that up, going to have to show a little bit more against um, against Jermel Charlo, because Jermel Charlo is used to he's used to facing guys that are as big as that are as big as uh, as as hurt is. And by that, I mean, his brother, because I think Jamal Charlo is every bit as big as uh is uh, Jared Hurd. Well, maybe not every bit as big. Jared Hurd seems like he could be at 168 pounds if he really wanted to. Um, but, and I, so I don't really think that this is, usually when somebody says something like this, I would feel like it was a, you know, a good bit of saltiness, but, you know, that's not, the, I don't think that's the case. I think that Austin Trout is just, you know, I mean, he's telling the truth. I also think that it had a lot to do um, with that approach, also had a lot to do with the fact that Jared Hurd beat uh, Israel Andy Lara. Now Israel Andy, he I think he showed a few more wrinkles in his game against Israel Andy Lara than he did against um, Trout, but still, he really did just. I mean, he really just walking guys down. I have a sneaking suspicion though, because neither Austin Trout nor Israel Andy, uh, Israel Andy Lara, you know, are going to hit you with a shot and do uh, to somebody what Jermel Charlo did to Erickson Lubin, right? So uh, Jermel Charlo under, since he switched from Ronnie Shields to uh, Derek James, really does have a lot more crack, you know, a lot more crack in his, in his shots, man, and he's hurting people. Now, as far as his fight with Trout and with uh, Trout and Jamal Charlo and Jermel Charlo, I see Jermel Charlo winning this, but I think, you know, what I see is I see Jermel Charlo winning this thing by decision. I think that he's going to, I don't, cause I don't think that he's going to, when the times that I've seen him starch people, I mean, he really does catch people with shots that they're not, he's not, that they're not looking for, um, you know, things like that. But he's a, although he's increased his, he's increased his, uh, he's had more knockouts recently and has a more aggressive style. I still think the Jermel Charlo is in his in his heart of hearts. I think he's a I think he's a boxer, you know. So and if my memory serves me correctly, 
I also I also think that uh he said something to the effect that that he wasn't going to go for a spectacular knockout against Austin Trout uh that you know that he was going to let the fight come to him. And I think that's about the right thing. Now the last thing is cuz as far as like the size difference oh, another thing that Trout said is that it's it, you know you know that he feels size wise that he's much more evenly matched against Jamal against uh Jermel. He said it's even more abs- even more absolutely uh Jamal was huge, Heard was huge. Uh Mel is big but he ain't huge. It'll be good to finally fight some of my own size. I'm going to beat Charlo and become a two-time world champion just watch. Uh it helps, but again, they aren't the same person having spoken about Jamal and having been in with Jamal. Maul is bigger and Mel is a little bit faster. Uh, we are definitely preparing specifically for Mel. Uh, using the experience I gained fighting everyone to hone in to beat this boy. Try to explain. So, you know, that's how I kind of see this going, man. I see this being a, I don't see him stopping Austin Trout. I see it going to a decision. I see a unanimous decision, but I see an exciting fight on the undercard of about, which also I think is going to be, I'm really looking forward to, which is Abner Mares versus Leo Santa Cruz. Now, now that I think that Guillermo Rigondeaux was unofficially, unofficially retired, I have a feeling that he's not coming back. Um, and you know, and good luck to you, my man, great career. Uh, Hey man, you did your thing. If that's the case. Um, I can now start talking about the 126 pound division and really, you know, being interested in what happens. Uh, I'm not going to make a prediction. I have Leo Santa Cruz beaten uh, Abner Mares. I think Abner Mares looks a little bit better, looks better under um, Robert Garcia. And I do believe also, on the other hand, also uh, Leo Santa Cruz, I do believe his father is going to be back in his corner. I know that his father had some issues with, with his health. And, you know, that had been, according to reports, that had been a distraction for Leo Santa Cruz. But, you know, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm really looking forward to that bout. This is going to be another really, really great card um, that Showtime's put on, that the PBC's put on, you know. And, you know, that's the kind that's the topic that I'm going to go out on this on this video with. And I'm thinking I might actually do a a video about this specifically. And, you know, I was listening to some uh live streams last night you know because i'm a boxing junkie <laughs> for real so i listened to before i had this youtube channel i had you know another email account and i would listen to you know i would comment on people's comment sections i would listen to live streams right i'm subscribed to a lot of people under that under my under my personal email and that's the email nine times out of ten um well a little less now maybe maybe six times out of 10 that I'll actually go and listen and comment on people's pages. If I don't know specific, if I don't have a specific relationship with a channel at, you know, th- unless this channel for non-international boxing has a relationship with another channel, you know, if I'm kind of iffy on a guy or a lady and then I'll just go under my, I'll go under the, the account that I've always been there on and, and, you know, and engage in conversations where I don't feel like, you know, that type of stuff is going to leak back onto my page. So I did, uh, cause seriously, man, if you'll, you guys might notice if you guys come, if people come with crazy comments on this page, they get deleted and I am, and I am delete and I'm delete button happy. I, it won't stay there. If you come to the channel, calling me a name, calling me this, calling me that, if I see that email, if I see that text or comment, and I usually do because it comes up on my app, usually I do, uh, it'll be gone. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just I'm not going to I'm not going to argue back and forth with you. I'm just going to get rid of it because, you know, my comment section is not your trash can. That's my thought. Right. And if you want to, you know, try to tear down my tear down myself or tear down people that, you know, that are in the comment section, you know, if a regular debate or whatever is cool, but if you go too far with that, I get rid of that, you know, but, and so that's why I don't want like to have a lot of people come over and I do that. But anyway, my point was that I was in a conversation, uh, in a live stream the other day with a channel I've been subscribed to for a while. And it's kind of a place where, uh, certain UK channels hang out there, 
you know, real heavy anti and uh, anti Deontay Wilder channels at the moment comment. Um, you'll even see some people like, you know, who are just, you know, well-known trolls <laughs> in the YouTube com- community. They kind of hang out and, you know, that's it's a place where they act like they've got a little bit of sense. But you still hear, you know, these <laughs> ridiculous comments. So one of these comments that came out and from the channel was talking about the PBC and comparing the PBC premier boxing champions with Eddie Hearn. And I didn't comment on it. Right. <laughs> but I was like, man, do these people what what does what does the PBC have to do to be considered a success? By the metrics that these people, the standard that these peoples have, there is absolutely nothing that the PBC can do to be considered a success. And it's so ironic because that's the same standard that people were using for Eddie for using for Eddie Hearn. Saying that there's nothing that he can do to be successful. That's in which I think is completely and utterly incorrect. One thing he could do to be more successful in the United States and get people off his back is stop lying. That's it. Just stop lying. You know, <laughs> stop lying. That's the number one thing. Number two, make the fights that people want to see. Right. Just make the if you would have taken if you wouldn't have lied about if you wouldn't have lied about Deontay Wilder never having contacted him. If you walk, wouldn't walk around insulting Deontay Wilder, insulting American fighters, insulting, uh, insulting American boxing. Right. Then people might be a little more open to hear what he has to say, because nobody is really in love with any promoter here in the United States. I didn't have it before he started telling those stories. I didn't have any beef with that stuff at all. But the conversation in this particular thing moved on to Eddie, uh, Al Heyman and the mistakes that the PBC had made. And I'm thinking to myself, listening. What mistakes did he th- didn't they just have? A absolutely monstrous 2017. Aren't they having a great, how many championship fights are we watching on Showtime? How many championship fights are at the Barclays Center being aired on show, being aired on Showtime, being on PBC cards? I I, I could have sworn that it's like, it's like, it's monthly. In the first half of this year, there's been, you've gotten to see very, the fights are very good fights. The numbers on the fights for Showtime for Showtime are very good, many times beating bigger channel in just raw numbers, not even with a percentage adjustment, HBO. Showtime has grown into being the number one boxing channel in America. In my opinion, n- number wise, it's on the it's on the rise. It's actually outperforming HBO on a regular basis where they have a much smaller audience. They have the absolute they have the best fight cards, in my opinion. And people have been predicting that people have been predicting that Al Heyman was going to go out of business. Two years ago, it's two years later, man, and he, he just had the biggest fight financial success in a boxing match in history just last August with Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. That fight generated a billion dollars worth of revenue for people. And on top of it, now you've got the top promoter in the UK coming, trying to do the, trying to take the fighters that are signed to the BBC. So how in the world can that be considered a failure? It seems like, I mean, God dog, what does he have to do to be considered a success? Every fight has to be, every fight has to be Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather. You know what I mean? What we got to do? Air, air, uh, Errol Spence Jr. And, and, um, Errol Spence Jr. Versus Danny Garcia every day. (laughs) I mean, I don't get it, man, but you know, it is what it is. And that's what people think about it. I think I'm going to go into a video in a little bit larger, longer detail on that subject. But as far as this, this is another very solid fight night coming up. On Saturday, I'm also looking forward to what's happening out of Box Nation with Safiri Safari and Tyson Fury. I'm the return of the Mac. The Mac is back. I'm amped about that and looking forward to seeing that and having that uh, more discussions in the heavyweight division, which quite honestly, man, 
is doing very, very, is a very, very exciting division. And Eddie Hearn deserves a lot of credit for the heavyweight division being very exciting right now. Now, there's it's a lot of controversy in that, but, you know, it is what it is, man. Um, but I'm looking forward to these fights. And with that, I'm out. Peace.